Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. Okay, let me um, share with you a lockdown project. Well, one of them anyway. Uh, I've done a couple, keeping myself occupied. I've got, I had in the attic an amplifier, a Technics amplifier, an SUV5, and um, I wanted a hi fi setup for my den. Uh, but the only thing it didn't have is a tuner. Before I get into the repair of this, um, I would like to emphasize a warning here, and that is that this exposes anybody working on this, it exposes them to full mains voltage. It's not very well protected on both the board and the upper side of the board. It could be dangerous, so the only people I would recommend that attempt this will be either engineers, electronic engineers, or very competent technicians. I wouldn't like to hear of anybody getting hurt of by doing this. Okay, so the um, so slightly unwisely, I uh, went on a well-known auction site and purchased what I believe to be STZ45. L, which is which I deem to be very compatible with this amplifier, about 19, early 1980s, 81, 82, tuner in excellent condition. Well, lo and behold, a fall in their money is easily parted. No, it wasn't expensive, it was a tenner, but by the time you know you pay posting packaging, it's another tenner on, on top of that. But by the time it arrived, and I believe actually the seller sold it in a working condition, but by the time it arrived, it wasn't working at all. And that is the um, basis of this repair. Right, having some difficulty removing board, uh, a little more trickier than I thought. Yeah, before I do, let me show you where the mains terminals are, which is here. You've got the live and neutral here, very exposed not very nice to work on you could drop an instrument on that or you could accidentally while you're preoccupied put your hand onto it so to work on this and of course the other side of the board as well the uh, the wiring side the printed uh, side is uh, equally exposed so to work on this you really need to cover that up first one of the first things i observed when i had the board in my hand was this scorched area here but again we're going to that in a second <clears throat> let me move on to the next slide here we are now this is what i've done i covered this with a top of deodorant can spray uh, quite effective and it stopped me just glancing off the, on those terminals one of the other things to be aware of this fluorescent tube display here is very delicate that was my concern if it were to be damaged, um, it would probably write off the repair completely. Uh, it wouldn't be worth attempting unless, of course, you've got a second unit and somehow, um, you know, between the two made one good working unit. Right, I'll move on to the um, next slide. Okay, um, to remove the board, it's, uh, as I said, it's a bit tricky. First of all, you need to remove the front panel. You, you, you can uh, undo all screws at once and the thing more or less falls apart. But the way I kind of did it was to, on the right hand side here, you've got the on off switch and there are two screws tightening that down. So I remove those. There's a bracket here holding the fluorescent tube assembly in place. That bracket must be removed. Don't try and pull this board out. With that bracket in place you will most likely very quickly damage the fluorescent display. The bracket is removed by removing that one screw and with a small screwdriver just lever this bracket off being mindful that this display is glass and that the vacuum sealing is, um, is actually just behind this bracket. If that were to break it would ruin the fluorescent tube display. So to remove the front panel you would, um, yeah the main switch I mentioned, there's an LED display here with one screw in there that's worth removing so both the main switch and that comes away. The bracket I've just mentioned gets removed. 
then come over to here and undo this screw here this is a red screw as indeed that one was a red screw that's a red screw remove that and finally remove that red screw there there is a plastic sheet that runs through here and it's loose it's not glued in in any way and it sits underneath these switches uh, flicking up between the switch and the push button assembly you can see each one has that little uprise and you can see the plastic here but that's all one strip and it needs to be mindful that you don't drop and lose that once you've got the front panel removed you can then go ahead and remove and i think it yeah it's these three screws here and these are chassis connecting screws one two and a third one that is underneath here Ooh, quite no there it is and those get removed there this is the uh, mains transformer purity screw that can be removed and on the back panel you've got these screws here and there and there they all need to be removed this screw here uh, in association with this screw here removes the mains input panel here and if you want to remove the board completely it's better that you undo those so that the mains lead and this comes with you and doesn't get uh, retained onto the chassis. Once I got the unit working and I go into um, how I achieve that in a second I thought I'd show you here the main switch when in fact it's not a main switch it actually switches the uh, secondary and um, once it was working I noticed that this was actually intermittent so I had to um, find a way of cleaning this it's a sealed unit to make it uh, work properly and I suspect that that is, was part of the reason why the board was damaged was because the uh, secondary was being switched in a very fast and intermittent way and as you can see the unit is now working we've got the display there the circuit diagram for this I, I, I couldn't find you can get an online free PDF um, circuit diagram service manual but not for this not for the 45 you can get it and I've got the link uh, listed below in the description for where you can obtain this PDF file for free it's not for the STZ45L it is in fact for the 55 that's the STZ55L but they're very very similar I think there's just a front panel change and you can obtain that which is brilliant very useful thank you very much the um, you can see the picture here when I originally opened up the unit uh, it had a couple of uh, super caps in here these are 3.3 farad 2.3 volt gold super capacitors i am um, obtained replacements cleaned off the printed circuit board in fact i used a bit of uh, methylated spirits on a rag and just cleaned. it wasn't the it wasn't didn't damage any of the components but it needed to be removed and i removed these capacitors and replaced them from capacitors I purchased from radio spares again there's a link in the description below I wouldn't be tempted to buy these through a well-known auction site because the dates are critical and I suspect that you wouldn't obtain a new stock item for this it's worth going to a reputable supplier that will that you have confidence that the product is of good standing right so that's one of the first things I said this was not the cause of the um, of the fault the repair of the ball but it needed to be replaced okay as for the repair itself you can see up here you've got the uh, VHF tuner and AM circuitry here it's accomplished in these two chips all of that was perfectly working I had no reason or cause to touch that although I didn't know that in the first place but it, it's worth noting that these are critical adjustments and unless you've got the uh, a very good equipment and um, and you suspect that there is something wrong here 
it's worth not touching them. This is the uh, multiplex decoder over here, the stereo multiplex decoder uh, to the basic form. Yes, as I mentioned before, this was scorch here, which gave me a fair indication that something was wrong. You'll notice also that this single transistor, which was originally, uh, and it's the series regulator transistor, a 2S for sugar, D for David, that's 2SD762. The replacement cost of that transistor was a bit high. And I found the, and incidentally, I'll um, link a data sheet in the description for that uh, transistor. I replaced it with a TIP 41C. I um, checked the HFE, the gain of my TIP 41Cs to find within a batch of about 10 of them I had stock. Uh, the C version is a 100 volt version. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, install anything less than that. Although I think it'd be probably quite happy working on 80 volts, but I had C's in stock. Yeah, so I replaced it with that and I added on a small, which I made myself uh, a small heat sink. I, usually, I keep a strip of aluminium for this kind of purpose and I cut that down to size. You can obtain it from most hardware um, shops. The wattage dissipation here is, is about one watt, extremely low. So that's the reason why they didn't actually put a heat sink on in the first place. But given what I saw on the board here, when this transistor goes faulty, obviously it has the opportunity and the power source to develop quite a bit of heat. Its drive transistor, which is perfectly okay, is this transistor here, which is Q702. The, the faulty defective transistor was Q701. The output voltage, which is on the emitter of Q701, should be about 14 volt, unusual uh, voltage level, but about 14 volts DC. And I think that was set to provide these two chips here with their um, optimum voltage. So that was effectively the repair. It was simply the series pass regulator transistor here, Q701. Uh, once that re was replaced, everything fired up. I checked the uh, performance of the tuner and it worked perfectly and I had no reason to touch anything else. As you can see um, from this next slide, I've got the switch here and you can see how I dealt with cleaning the switch. I drilled a very small uh, one and a half millimeter diameter, I think it was, hole, small as possible, with a, a hand drill. That is, <laughs> I used, um, I suppose it's commonly thought of as like a grandfather hand drill with a winding handle. I find for this particular purpose, you have maximum control over that. You do not want the drill bit to go too far into this plastic housing assembly uh, because if you were to do that you could damage the actual mechanism of the switch itself and this just gives you the facility to squirt in a bit of uh, switch cleaner and then I operated the switch for maybe 20 times backwards and forwards until the switch became clean and stopped being intermittent which I suspect was the cause of the problem in the first place. So that sorted that out. Uh, the only thing that's worth mentioning here while we're, while we're in this picture is the fuse. The fuse wasn't blown. The fuse was checked and it's a, uh, a 500 milliamp time delay fuse. And um, this is the unit fully assembled. Boy, would I like to um, demonstrate its sound quality. It is actually very good. It sounds very good. I'm very pleased with it. It all functions, all the buttons function. It's worth mentioning that the memory back up here, which is those two capacitors I replaced, those two super gold capacitors, have a finite period of time which they hold their charge. And after about a week or two of no power being applied to the tuner, they will lose uh, the, um, their data. So therefore you'd switch it on and you'd find that all your, <laughs> this is convenient, isn't it? 
you would find that all your um, uh, channels that you've uh, programmed into this have gone. Yes, um, I think they were in need of an EPROM, aren't they really? I would have loved to have dearly demonstrated the sound quality of this tuner, but due to fear of copyright strike, um, I don't think I can, can I? But you have to take my word for it, it sounds very good. This is Beamer signing out for now.